People living in Louisiana's Cajun country are being told to get to higher ground. On Saturday, engineers opened the Morganza spillway to relieve flooding concerns in New Orleans and Baton Rouge. That decision will cause the water from the Mississippi River to flood communities in the Atchafalaya River Basin. The flooding along the Mississippi, tornadoes across the south, and crippling snowstorms in the northeast and midwest. Mother Nature has given you plenty of reasons this year to make better preparations for a natural disaster. Kelly Grant from SmartMoney.com joins us with some ways you can improve your disaster plan. Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning. You know, sometimes people don't even start to think about this disaster plan until something is about to happen or has happened. First step, you say reassess your insurance coverage. Certainly something to think about. Uh, very important to make sure your home is protected. Make sure you have an adequate amount to cover. Uh, rebuilding your home, all of your possessions, and certainly look at any additional riders that you might need. Oftentimes, earthquake, flood insurance is not included, and you'll need to add that extra hurricane to in certain areas and then of course you want to look at if you have an older home getting that lawn ordinance rider to uh, make sure that your home can be rebuilt to whatever the newest codes are. Which Next thing you say though is to improve your home speaking of those codes and you can get some rewards on the back side. You can. Certainly insurers are very interested in having consumers um, rebuild their homes and, and fortify them against a lot of these disasters, adding things like storm shutters, safe rooms, um, you know, wind resistant roofing. All of those things can get you insurance discounts and you can often even cut the purchase price too. There are some federal grants out there for some of these items, sales tax holidays and even some tax credits. Good idea to have a lockbox that is fire and waterproof. Why? You want to be making sure that you're safeguarding all of your important financial documents, the things that either can't be replaced or are very hard to be replaced and that you would need in an emergency. Things like birth and marriage certificates, your passports, uh, copies of your social security card, your driver's license, of course that insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And then it's also a good idea to have uh, almost a video walkthrough of your home so that that way if there is some sort of an emergency that you've got a pretty good sense of everything that you had there. And the value of it. The family plan, basically the, the question to what do we do if blank happens? Very important to answer that question ahead of time so that no one panics. So you want to sit down with your family and talk about what duties everyone would have if there was have if there was an emergency where you either had to weather the storm in place or if you were evacuating. If it's the latter case, you want to pick a place to meet outside the home if it's an event um, like a fire that's forcing you to evacuate. And also something that's a little further away, say you're, you're all out at school and work and you can't get home, where do you go from there? And then of course you've got the emergency kit, which so many people would say, well, what in, what in the world do I put in this thing? And everybody has their own definition. What do you say put in an emergency kit? Well, it's all pretty intuitive, and I mean, the Red Cross has a pretty good list online, but basically you're looking at bottled water, canned food, enough for a couple of days at least if you're stuck in your home. You want to look at things like a first aid kit, flashlight, batteries, of course, to go with it. Just basic things that you might need if you were to be stuck at home for a couple of days. All right, great tips. Kelly Grant from SmartMoney.com. Kelly, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.